Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to DC Universe Online. Little um, editorial, I guess. I got papers in front of me. I got papers. It's actually like six papers. I pages. I couldn't believe what's going on. So this video, we're going to be talking about about what's new for DC Universe Online. This was a post that created by Spittle, moderated by Meps, uh, that happened onto the forums at the time of this recording, which is like basically the day of. Uh, Right now, it's up to 30 pages long. And a lot of people are skipping through those pages. You don't really want to skip through any of it. A lot of players are asking some really great questions, and Mebs and Spiller are coming in with some great answers for those people, for those players as well. And can I just give a round of applause to, you know, to you guys, to the community? I mean, fan flipping tastic. This is actually a lot better than how a lot of us in the CRT were, were thinking about. But you guys have done a uh, great job with the responses and honestly, not much negativity. There's been a lot, a couple of posters that, of course, they're known for kind of their negativity a little bit. But they've been kind of positive about it. So you know what? Kudos for those people who knew exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> Kudos, guys. So in this video, I'm going to try and break down Spill's post as best as I can. I got the post right here in front of me. And I also have some questions from some players who tweeted me out and also some random stuff to discuss about as well to further along how to break this down for you guys. Now, this was a very long post, very detailed, very highly energetic. I mean, Spill brought out that first instinct where just... Oh, this is going to nothing but energy right there to start, start us off with. So now let's go into the heavy duty here. So beginning with Game Update 47. Now Game Update 47, by the way, is going to be a huge update. All right, so they kind of broke in some of the stuff here coming with this future, but more stuff for Game Update 47 is coming down the line. I can't at least say that. Can't say what it is. Boom. So uh, beginning with update, Game Update 47 and continuing... After Halls of Power Part 2, which the live stream is coming on Friday uh, at, I believe, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time over on DC Universe's Twitch channel, if you guys are watching. Uh, so continuing after Power uh, Halls of Power Part 2, we are seizing the opportunity as a new company, as Daybreak Games, to bring the, to do things differently, to do things better, and here's what's ha coming at a higher level. All right. So after Halls of Power Part 2. We will launch new content episodes roughly monthly instead of quarterly. And they are going to launch new gear and rewards roughly monthly instead of quarterly. And with Game Update 47, the Marks of Victory will replace both Marks of Fury and Marks of Triumph for a single mark of currency across the game. Marks of Victory will only be awarded when content is relevant to the player based on the combat rating. Alright, so we remember, for the people who are here at launch, we remember that... DC was supposed to bring out monthly content. Well, I came from about four or five years of World of Warcraft, okay? And I came into DC Universe Online, I saw monthly content. I held my breath. And I could have probably died, but I did breathe. But realistically, at the time for DC, I'm like, you know what? I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, and I'll believe it when I see it. I will. It was a brand new. It was a brand new game coming at launch. They had great ideas, but really, we weren't seeing that monthly content. I mean, we didn't get to see the first DLC until what six months after release, maybe eight, nine. I think it happened in September, October, August, or September. Yeah, the first DLC, Fire for the Light. So the monthly content was kind of rough back then. We really didn't. Ex we they said it. It wasn't really a big realistic thing, so they couldn't really go with it. Now they're bringing it back. We're going to get monthly episodes. But this time, Yens has brought us an amazing background on how this is actually going to apply to the game. So, four years later, we're going to get monthly content. I gotta say, it's... I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt in the least. Uh, so, and with Game Update 47, with the Marks of Victory. Now, this is actually causing a lot of controversy here on the forums. Okay, I'm not going to say controversy. A little bit of an uproar. Mainly because we're getting rid of the Marks of Fury, Marks of Triumph, and even we're getting rid of Symbols. Symbols are going away as well. So we're going to base down to one mark, to a one mark system for PvE. We'll still have the Marks of Victory for PvP. And no, there's going to be no exchanging, no conversion of Marks of Victory to Val, uh, for like the Valor to Victory. None of that. None of that. So with Marks of Victory now going to be the number one uh, mark here, and we're still going to have the mark cap. We're still going to have the cap of 100. Now, 
a lot of, of course, players still don't like the 100 mark cap. No one likes it. I really don't care. I never hit the cap. I, I just never do. I mean, as soon as I get something, it's like, spit, 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 done. So, but now we're going to get down to a one mark system, and I'll go over that a little bit later. Uh, but, and this also where the marks of victory will only be rewarded to content to the relevant player. That's going to be explained a little later down the line as well. So, let's go digest into the really good stuff into the monthly episodes. So, these episodes... We already have the episodes. They came with the marketplace change. They're happening now. I mean, Halls of Power Part 2 is the next episode. Now, Halls of Power Part 2 is the last big, large episode. I mean, this thing is coming out with, I think, six pieces of content. Which, six pieces of content means like a duo, alert, raid, all that good stuff. It's coming out with six pieces. It's coming out down the line. So, and we're, get, we're probably getting to see that reveal, too. Can't wait for that reveal. So this is our last big DLC, and this DLC is going to last us maybe about three, four months. Okay, so this, the, so this, everything we're talking about here is going to be after Halls of Power Part Two. So this is going to be three, four months down the line. So previously, we released one large episode every quarter. This amounts to roughly six pieces of content every three months. Basically, yes, six pieces of content every three months. We deliver them in one big chunk, expecting the content will last players until the next big chunk came out. Unrealistic. Replay badges destroyed that little idea, all right? That was gone when replay badges was... Okay, sorry. The idea was, yes, six pieces of content was supposed to last you those those months, but replay badges really fixed that, didn't it? So they're going to deliver the same amount of content per quarter, just differently. So after Halls of Power Part 2, we'll release two pieces of content monthly in a three-month cycle. Members will still automatically get access to all the episodes. Non-members will have to will be able to purchase the episodes that interest them in the marketplace. So before we go, uh, so here's the graph. I'll show you the graph here. And before I go into it, I was want to point out this right here. Members, like myself, members, we will have access to the episodes because we're subscribers. We are members. Boom, done. Non-members, you guys will have to purchase the episodes that interest you. Okay, that interest you. That means that, let's say we have three episodes, one, two, and three. If you don't like one, boom, you don't have to get one. You want two, boom, get two. You don't want three, fine, you don't have to get three. Now, here's the kicker. If you, the vendor gear will not matter on which episode you get. If you get episode two, you have access to the vendor for all of it. All the vendors, whatever the vendors has, you can get it. It doesn't matter which episode, okay? Now, if you want a certain piece of gear that we'll get into in a moment, now, because episode one, two, and three, as an example, these three here, each have their separate own content. I mean, their own item, their own loot. So, if you're looking for a chest, and chest only drops in one, and you don't get number one, you only get you only get these two. You're not gonna get a chest. You're gonna you're not gonna get the loot that drops from this episode. Okay, you're just not gonna get it. But we'll further along into that in a moment. So, now let's take a look at. Look at this, the graph, hopefully it fits. I'm trying my best to stay away from it. I'm not sure how big I'm gonna make it. So let's further look down the line. So you're looking over here on the left-hand side, the green is cycle one, blue is cycle two. And each set of two is a one month of content. So you got the three here. So these three here, uh, let's see. So we have a raid and a duo. Alert and Elite Alert solo, and then Raid and Elite Alert and Duo. Okay, that's one cycle. Then we on the blue side we have a Raid Duo and there. That's two months of cycle right there. And by what it means by each set of two, meaning that this right here are two cycles. All right, the the green's a cycle and and the blue is a cycle. The set of two is the Raid and Duo is month one. Alert in the solo, month two. Raid and alert, uh, the raid in the duo, month three. And then the cycle repeats, and you get another month, another month, and another month. They gave us six months right there to look at. All right, that's six months to look at. So, and this is basically how it's going to look. So, month one, we're going to get a raid in the duo. And then, and if you don't want to do month one, fine, don't do month one. 
If you want to do month two, boom, month two comes out with an alert, the elite alert, and the solo. Now, the solo is a, is a combination. It could either be a solo mission, maybe even two solo missions, or it's going to be open world content. So open world content is still going to be there. I'm sorry for the people who have potato PCs. I'm sorry. Open, open world stuff isn't going anywhere, sadly. But it's a choice. And then we have the raid and the elite raid and the duo. So the, alert, the elite alert acts exactly the same way as the elite raid does. It's going to be the same, the same alert, the same piece of content for that, de for that episode. And this is going to be a harder version of it. This is going to be elite. So there you go. This right here is month one, two, and three for one cycle. And then the next cycle starts up with the blue. And you got month one, two, and three again. So every three months, so every three months is a cycle. Okay? Look at it that way. This basically equal it's basically a quarter. Every quarter. Okay. I mean it's four and there's going to be four cycles per year. And we'll get that later. So, let's talk about the new gear and rewards monthly instead of quarterly. So previously, each quarter episode would have new sets of gear to unlock. This will look similar over the three-month cycle going forward. But instead of having all the gear sets available right away, the gear will release in partial sets for each month's content. Each month's content. The new content will bring new drop gear, plus more gear will be added to the vendor for marks with each new content release. The idea is that the entire cycle represents all the rewards a traditional large episode would have offered, but spaced out to match a monthly release of content. So, look at there. It's chart time. So in this chart, this is what we're looking at. So you, this is one, this is three months. This is our first cycle. Our first cycle right here are three months. Our first month gives us a raid and a duo. Then we our second month gives us the alerts and the solo. And the third gives us the raids and the duo. All right. So there's our cycle right there. Let's look at the gear below it. So first we have our vendor gear, our rare, our rare gear, and the set gear. Let's go with the vendor gear first. Vendor gear, you will have access. This is episodes one, two, and three. All right. As an example, one, two, and three. One, two, and three up there. The episode one, month one, is going to within the raid and the duo. You will have the vendor will offer chest, back, legs, and waist. You'll have four of those on the vendor. Also in that month. The rear gear that drops from these from the raid and the duo is going to have chest, back, legs, and waist. Okay? So that's where you're going to get, if you want your chest, back, legs, and waist, and you didn't buy episode one, but you got episode two, well, you want that chest and back, you have to have episode one. Or you just go to the vendor. And the vendor gear, again, is going to be less than the rare gear. And we'll go into that in the item levels in just a moment. So, month two, we have the alerts and the solo. The vendor gear will unlock the weapon, hand, uh, I'm sorry, the weapon, head, hands, and feet. And then the rare gear is going to have the weapon, helmet, heads, and feet. So, that's just a typo, I think, on Mepsis' part. The helmet is still the headpiece. The head is where the helmet goes, so it's still a head, it's still a helmet. Apparently, that squeaked by. I'm pretty sure Source said something about it, but, you know, it's there. Uh, so, the head is going to be a rare drop from there. Now, that's for the alert and the solo for the rare gear. This, uh, the set gear here. That's new to DCUO. And there's a lot of people who, this DCO is their first MMO. So, what is set gear? And I will grant that right here. Uh, a set bonus grants special qualities once a prerequisite amount of pieces from the gear set are equipped by a character. In short, when you complete each set of four, good things will happen. Okay, so, and we'll discuss that in just a moment. So, uh, so the set gear, the first set gear is going to be dropping in month two, and you'll get chest, back, legs, and waist. So your first four is going, and those right there, that set gear, by the way, drops in the elite alert. All right, going to drop in the elite and then in month, in month three, you get the raid, the elite raid, and the duo. 
The Vrinda gear is going to give you the ring, face, neck, trinket, and shoulders, and the vendor's set gear, and the vendor set gear of chest, back, legs, and waist. That's all vendor gear. So if you don't get into the elite alert in month two and come month three, you do want your first set of gear, well, it's going to be on the vendor. But it's going to be an item level of vendor status, not set gear status. So the stats might be a little lower, but hell, you still got set gear, son. You get that set bonus. Yeah! That's all I care about. I'm waiting for month three for my vendor stuff because most likely I'm not going to run the elite. Not because I can't. It's mainly because I can't. I just don't have faith in myself. I'm a horrible player. I have no faith in myself. Now also, with the rare gear, you're going to get your face, your neck, your trinket, ring, and shoulder. Okay? And then the second set of set gear is going to be your hands, head, feet, and shoulder. Okay? That's your other set of four. Now, so far, they haven't said whether or not if you collect all eight, you get a set bonus. You get, like, a bigger set bonus. I'm not sure. We haven't really seen the gear because it's not on test yet. Once it gets on test and we can actually take a little closer look at it, we'll, we'll have a better determination of what's going on. But there you go. That's what this chart is. So, again, if you want, your, if you want the set gear and you don't run the Elite Alert, you can get your first set in month three but under the vendor status. Now, let's go into the actual drops, okay? So we're all already familiar with normal drops, vendor gear, and rare gear. So set gear, it replace. so the set gear, here's the kicker, okay? The set gear replaces the rare gear that was previously found in Elite Arrays. Instead of that Elite gear having a higher item level and stats, it will now have the same item level and stats, so it will not affect the combat rating. Plus, a highly desirable new type of game mechanic called a set bonus. So that's your set bonus. You're going to get something extra with it. So, my previous argument was the elite raids. You didn't have to run them because they're not part of progression. It's like the current elite throne that we have. It's not really part of progression. It's kind of like a tier 7 raid. And it's only there for the, for the dedicated hardcore raiders who really want that tough challenge. And that's for them. Now we're going to have Elite Alerts and Elite Raids, and they're going to give you a set gear. I really, really love the fact that they are not increasing the CR for the set gear. So, basically, the set gear and the rare gear are going to be the same. Okay, they're just going to be the same. So, let's talk about item levels, okay? So, normal drops, basically, they're going to have that base item level. I mean, they're going to be bloods or greens, whatever. Then you'll have your vendor gear which is going to be the item level plus six. So it's going to be plus six of the normal drops. All right, so the normal drops with that item level, that's think of that like a, that's a base. That's like 50, all right? It's a 50 item level. The vendor gear is going to be plus six. So it's going to be 56. Then the rare gear is going to be plus eight. So it's going to be 58. And then the set gear is going to be 58 as well. The set gear and the rare gear both share the same item level. The only difference is you get that set bonus. They'll mostly, I think they're gonna have the same stats. So it's you're just really replacing rare gear with the set bonus gear to try and get that set bonus. That's that's the only difference. And like I said, with the set bonus in month three, in that previous chart, in month three, when you have the vendor set gear. That's going to be the item level plus six. So it's going to be two item levels below the actual set gear that you get from drops. All right, so please, so do keep that in mind. So the next chart. I love charts. Thank you, Spittle. Love charts. It makes it easier for a visual perception. So here we go. This is where everything's dropping, okay? You got your solo and your duo. Basically, everything is going to drop normal drops, okay? Everything's going to do it. The Alert and the Raid will drop the Rare Gear. The Elite Alert and the Elite Raids will drop the Set Gear. So, this also gives us a closer look at determining which boss drops which piece. That's really been a big thing in DCUO, especially when you're doing your raiding, is to figure out, like, okay, what does the first boss drop? Does the first, drop, uh, does the first boss only drop boots? Sweet, it drops boots. I can try and farm that boss to get new boots. 
this is a close this is a close representation that we have to that. Because I know in World of Warcraft we have Wowhead, Alakazam, Thought Bot, I think it's Thought Bot. I can't remember, it's been so long, but I, I always go to Wowhead. DCO doesn't have a head. We don't have a DC head. That's what we want. We had DC database, which is kind of obsolete, but I mean and the only and with DC database you had to enter everything manually. We're getting close I feel we're getting to a closer to a point where we can some genius out there with coding is able to replicate where we can take the information from the database of the game in the game files, get where the information of these bosses of what the bosses are and what drops they have and have a website for it, for a database. That I feel we're getting closer to it and I really hope that's the case because I really like that. We all would, right? Yes, we all would. So, so there you go. This chart explains where everything is going to drop for you. So the elite stuff, the elite alert and the raid are going to drop the set gear, while the regular raid uh, alert and the regular raid are going to drop your rare gear. And of course, everybody drops normal drops. Why the hell not, right? Why not? So now, coming from an MMO background already, I already know the steps when you're when new content comes out. You you have steps. There are steps. Some people don't believe in these steps, but they're steps. Mainly being the step is you start off with your solo, you know you get some good you get some good drops from there, you progress yourself up to the alerts, okay? Or I'm sorry, uh, from the solo you get to the duo, all right, got some good stuff there. Then you go to the alert, you're like, all right, the alert, give me some great stuff. Need to farm this alert content. Need to farm the alert gear. Once I get a full set of alert gear, then we go into raids, and then we get that raid gear. Ooh, get that good raid gear. Then once you get your raid gear, now I guess you I guess you go straight into the elite alert and go into the elite raid. Content with these days right now is everyone is pretty much max CR by the time the next piece of content comes out and they bum rush straight into the raid, not really messing with the alert too well. I'm not saying everybody does it, but a lot of but there's some some people who can who do that. Which, you know, follow the diagram. Follow it. So now let's talk about Marks of Victory. Marks of Victory will, of course, replace the Marks of Fury and the Marks of Triumph. One single mark, mark, one mark to rule them all. Yeah, that was kind of lame. I'm sorry. I, I'm not even a Lord of the Rings fan. So, uh, so with uh, so in Game of the Day 47, they Marks of Fury and the Triumph will be converted to Marks of Victory, and this new mark will be used in all the content across the game, going both backward and forward. This also means that your solo con when you're leveling up, if you make a new character leveling up, those side missions that give you the marks of triumph, they're going to give you now a mark of victory, including the Raven content and the, and the, uh, the Central City bounties and all that stuff. They're all going to give you marks of victory as well. So all content will award marks of victory in standard amounts. Solo content will award one. Two-player content will award two. Four-player will award five. And eight-player content will award ten. I couldn't really use the other hand because you know what? Oh, ten. <laughs> so that's how much of the marks you're going to get from your content. Uh, all gear vendors will require mark of victory, and costs have been normalized from tier to tier. And I want to make sure. Okay, so normalized means that the cost of vendor gear right now is already for tier one and two. It's already pretty pretty low, and it's mainly because once you hit level thirty, you're supposed to have enough marks to really try and go for your first piece of tier one. Uh, also, the renowned vendors who require that Marks of Triumph is too, they're going to be Marks of Victory as well. Not sure how much the vendor cost is, but they're going to be there as well. So with your Marks of... Uh, so tier one and tier two are basically, they're pretty low. If you're looking for a standardized or a normalized cost, look at tier six. That's going to be the cost from like, I think, tier three and up. Don't I, you can quote me on it? I believe that's what Met Sale No Forums uh, basically just look at tier six, and that's what the cost is going to be from tier three on. So it's going to be cost the same across the board from tier three up. And if I'm wrong, of course, make fun of me in the comments, like I'm sure you do. But also, please, do, uh, please make sure to link. I think you could probably still use links in comments. Be sure to link the forum post where Meps said it, because you know it helps. 
All right, so next is maybe mainframe utility belts and other forms of upkeep will require marks of victory. And these costs have been normalized as well. Mainframe boost levels will be consolidated into one scaling boost that will last for 60 days to make frame mainframes easier to maintain. And then symbols will be removed from the game. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So the mainframe, hmm, the mainframe. You still have your, what is it like three tiers? You have to choose like your first three, or I'm sorry, your first two. I think it's actually two. You choose uh, the first two. That's basically your set for the mainframe, okay? For your for your mods. Uh, so you, you put those in. And then you got your boosts. Instead of three boosts, it's going to be one. And that's going to scale according to your CR, I believe. So with your mainframe boosts, it's only going to cost one. You're only having to pay one time for 60 days. And you want know what the cost is? It's seven marks of victory. Seven marks for one boost for 60 days. I'm stressing because I want to make sure you guys understand that you need to take your tinfoil hats off. April Fools. April Fools. And I even got the math right here. And I want to thank my buddy Mathalos for this math. So, oh, also, so this is basically the math from math for you guys. The utility belt is going to be 10 marks per month. Okay, it's going to be 10 marks per month. So, 20 marks for the two, for two months. All right, for your 60 days, it's going to be 20. And then your mainframe, if you choose all five of the boosts. If you choose all five, that's 35 marks right there. That's 55 marks for two months rent. 55. And that's only for two months. You can probably get knocked that out in a week, and then you got the rest of your marks to deal with. All you have to do is like, oh, I got 55 marks, rent, and you're done for two months. You're done. You don't have to worry about that for another two months. I, I'm not seeing the issue here. I'm not. I'm just not seeing it. But there you go. Your utility belts, the rents, and everything. It's going to be 55 marks for per two months. Every 60 days, 55 marks. Just just put that in the back of your mind, in your back pocket, and just remember, 55 every 60 days. Now, the real a real big kicker. Marks will only be awarded when content is relevant to a player based on the combat rating. What this means, and luckily I'm having it right here. So, because I'm not going to go all completely word for word for this, for each listing, okay? So, but to implement the Marks of Victory, we must also change where characters are eligible to receive marks. By relevant, we mean challenging to a character based on the combat rating. How that works, looking backward, is outlined below there. These changes do not imp impact other rewards or drops, only the receipt of marks. You must be within the combat rating range for the content you are in receive of the marks of victory. So as an example, tier one, all right, tier one. If I am between zero and 42, I get a mark. If I'm bef between 53 and 69, I can get a mark. Right now, I am one 107 CR on my main on Trex Rage. 107. Meaning that si tier 6B, I can get that content. Because I'm not... Uh, I'm not even at 116 either. But I'm, I'm in that category of 6B with between 106 and 116. So what does that mean? In a nutshell, I cannot get marks from tier 6A and below. I just can't get that... I can't get marks from there. I have to get marks from my tier, from tier 6B, which of course I believe is also going to include Halls of Power Part 2, of course. So I have more content, I have six pieces of new content to run in order to get stuff, and I also still have my current content from Amazon Fury Part 2. So they've already had a minimum CR requirement on your, when you're queuing in. Each instance has their own minimum mark, or in, uh, minimum CR. Now there's going to be a maximum CR. So we're going to have that new maximum now. So now a lot of people are really upset about this because they all run. They all run low content. 
they all run like FOS3, Condac, all this, all this stuff willy nilly. They do. They run it for what? For rent. And also for you know, like feats and some like some old gear. And, you know, just to help out their buddies leveling up as well. You know, they help them out. They do the cool thing. But you're not going to get marks for it. You will still get feats. You'll still get your gear. If well, you, You'll still get gear. So you'll still get everything from that instance. Just not the marks that go with it. And... We can, we can really put this towards the devs listening to a lot of players, well, especially new players, that are really tired of high CR players coming in to their low-level stuff and blowing right through it and not really presenting a challenge for that new player. And that's a problem on both... And that's a problem. I, As an example, I was streaming just the other day with my munitions character that you'll probably see videos on my YouTube channel. You'll, I, was, I went into Area 51. It was myself... I was level, I was. I think I had level 13, level 12 or 13. And I had level 10. And then I had a CR 100 and a CR 113. Of course, the 100 was off doing his own thing, wasn't really paying attention with everybody else. But, I mean, we were breezing through it enough where I was bored. I was really bored and it wasn't fun. Now... Players are also going with, oh, well, you just destroyed the, the queue times for the for the lower level players. Well, according to Mets, not necessarily. According on their data, which I'm, of course, going to trust their data because they see that data. Well, on their data, that room, that space, that body that that high CR level player is taking could have easily gone to a low level player who's in the queue. Easily. Easily. So... We have this. So the higher CR players can still come into the come into the runs, but they're not going to get any marks from it. They'll get their feats and everything. So it kind of eliminates the stuff, but okay, it kind of does. Because most high-level CR players aren't really going to run stuff now because you're not going to get any marks from it. And so it's going to rely on the low-level players and those alts to run that content. And you might wipe, but you're going to learn from that wipe. You're going to learn. And you also might be able to find a bug that you can report. Isn't that fun? Bug reports. So, they're making the content harder. Not really harder. They're making the content equal for the player of that CR. And, of course, someone came in onto the forums talking about why don't we just base the difficulty of gaining mark? Why don't we uh, change difficult the changing of the marks for equipped CR? Like force us to like force us to have take our gear off and everything. Like you just talk about stat clamping. That is stat clamping. And Mets has already said that stat clamping is not on the table right now. Stat clamping is going to stay with the seasonal stuff, but stat clamping coming to PVE apparently is taking a hold. I think they're going to want to see the data between this new change with the CR uh, stuff of gaining marks and see if high levels are going in there or not. And they might bring in stat clamping. Later down the line, they might, but right at the at the moment right now, it's not on the table. Uh, they have no, they don't have any plans to bring it in just uh, just right now. Now, will I welcome stat clamping to the instances? Sure, why the hell not? I have no problem with that whatsoever. And but at the same time, remember as well that stat clamping doesn't always mean that you're going to get a mark from it. It'll be nice, but. Right now, this is just a bunch of hearsay and speculation. So, just understand that if stat clamping does come, will we get a mark from that instance if we run it? Maybe, maybe not. Don't know because we don't have it in the game. So, stat clamping right now is what? It's off the table. So, I want to take a look at this next graph. And this is, this is the diagram that, Met, that Spill came out with. Looking at a full year of content. So, uh, let's see. Let's make a diagram that shows a full year worth of content. <laughs> this amounts to four cycles. The diagram shows three players. They each have different combat ratings. This means that they all have different content relative to them, but the same amount overall. So, it's kind of hard to tell. I wanna make, uh, hopefully, I, I, blow, I blow this up where you guys can see. But player one is in that box where he has like two pieces of green, all the blue, and then one piece of purple. Where player two 
has all the blue, all the purple, and then player three has one of the blue, all the purple, and two of the peach. Is that peach? I'm gonna go with peach. That's a nice peach. So, uh, and, I'm, and I'm reading it as he has it here. Each piece of content has a minimum combat rating required, as uh, as it is for some, as it has for some time. This prevents players from jumping into content that is too high for them. Now, each piece of content will also have a maximum combat rating required. If a player has over the maximum, the content is no longer relevant and will not award marks of victory. As you gain CR, the bracket showing uh, relevancy shifts to the right, and the content to the right of the diagram will become available to you. So, what he's basically saying is, you have your stuff here in your green, it's going to shift over here to your blue. You're going to keep going to the right. You're not going to go back. No, we, we don't want to go back. We want to go forward. You can still queue for that non-relative content and earn other rewards like feats, renown, and drops, but not marks. So, and now this next one is, let's update the diagram and assume player three took a break and that player one worked really hard over the next few weeks and player two was off and on and interested in doing something other than gear progression during that time. It will look like that. Like that right there. As you see, player three didn't move. Player one jumped ahead and is able to do the last, uh, the last two quarters of content. Player two kind of moved a little bit, not really by much. And player three stuck where he is. So, if you're worried about your buddies catching up with you, it, it's gonna, it's, it, is, is it going to be a rat race? Maybe. Until we really get further into a few months of this, we won't really see how difficult it is to catch up. I mean, I, me, I play the catch-up game all the time, mainly because I have, I have this, I got other projects on my lap, so I don't really get to play uh, DCO, I don't get to play video games that often. So... I'm always playing catch up. I'm never really ahead of the curve or anything because I always have a limited amount of time. So on paper, this does scare me. I'm going to be really left behind, but I always ha I will have players to play with, just not my league or my friends. And I have to like, hey, can you come down here and help me? Oh, you ain't gonna get any marks, but can you help me anyways? No. Okay, I understand. No hard feelings. Don't be that guy and guilt your leaguers into things. Okay, don't don't be that guy or girl. Be helpful. Be equally helpful, but also understand that the players, it's their time to play as well. They might have time to help you with one thing, but don't constantly ask, ask, and ask. All right? Just understand that they have things that they want to do as well. This is their play time. Be respectful. So, until we get further months into this, I'm not really sure how this is going to go. On paper, like I said, it does scare me. I might be left behind. And as a legendary player... And even, even for the non-members, even for the non-members, you choose what you want to play. I might skip, I might skip the first two greens because I, I'm, I can go into episode, into the third green. I can go into that third green because I, I match the CR and I can just rock that entire thing left and right and rock around through it. Now also keep in mind of this month one. Sure. Month one, we get a raid in the duo. We get two things of content. That's only month one. That's 30 days. 31 or over, depending. That's only a couple of weeks. We can You can crank out some stuff in there. Of course, you can use replay badges. Or if you don't, you can still build up your time. But you don't have to like... You don't have to burn yourself out running those two pieces of content. Run them at a leisurely pace. Run them as nonchalantly as you want. And then next month, you're going to get alert in a solo to add on to that uh, to that content. That's gonna be four pieces of content that you can run to get your marks at your own pace. If you wanna just charge on head through, then go for it. You're gonna tie yourself out, that's on you, that's your player, that's how you wanna play, I understand, I will respect that. And then come month three, you'll get the entire, you'll get all six pieces. You'll get all six pieces of content, all of it. It's right there. So, uh, and so you don't have to really burn yourself out. You can just wait until month three and just go, all right, I got all this piece of content now. I can play wherever the heck I want. And then the next month rolls around to restart the cycle, and boom, there you go. Next cycle starts, and you just play it all over again.
So you don't have to burn yourself out. And I don't recommend burning yourself out. Play at a leisurely pace. That's basically what happens with each episode beforehand. I'm sure Halls of Power Part 1, two weeks. In two weeks, someone's going to be burned out. Someone's just going to say, there's nothing else to run. I don't have anything else to run. Well, thank you for your replay badges, sir. Thank you for supporting the game. Thank you for paying the devs dinner. But for God's sakes, man, slow your roll. Slow it down. It's going to be okay. If you don't have to be the person who beats it in the first week. Now you, then now you got like two months, two, two or three months, more months of stuff that you're just going to sit on your hands and knees. Unless you're gonna actually going to play an alt. Now we're just playing an alt. Munitions is really fun. So, let's go into this section of why. So, why fresh content. Uh, so, here are the asking whys. Fresh content more often. Monthly content releases mean there will always be something new just arriving or about to arrive. All content matters. Unlike with large episodes, each piece of content for a month will be the hardest content, awarding the best rewards. More content variety. With monthly episodes, we won't necessarily have to build a full six pieces of content that fit together thematically. Uh, we can also build one-off storylines in smaller series. Just a moment. Keep a hold, keep, Put that pin in that hat. That feather. That feather right there. Just, just grab onto it. Grab onto it. It's going to shake. It's going to fight. Don't let it fight. Just put it in your hat. Just put that in your hat real fast. More choice. Members will still have the same incredible value and in full episode access, and non-members can more specifically choose to purchase content that interests them. It's all about choice. That's exactly what this is all about. All about choice. Simplify progression. New and existing players will be less intimidated by skyrocketing marks of triumph numbers and better utilize features that require upkeep. I swear to Lord, I have to see 15,000 marks of triumph. I don't want to do that math. Uh, no, no, that, that I was... That's probably one thing that really is like, oh my god, I gotta get how many marks of triumph to get this piece of gear? Oh, you know what? I don't want to do it. I'm just gonna. I don't want to do it. So, thank you for the high outrageous numbers going away. I don't like you. When you see that kind of thing, it's visually, it's like scary. It's just scary when you first see it. Next, more gear and more interesting gear. Combined with our already in-progress improvements to the loot system, this content cadence and set gear means players will have more gear and more interesting gear to chase. Now, that feather, you can, you can, you can get your hat, because we're about to talk about it. More collaboration with DC and Warner Brothers. As we are not locked into large episodes, we will be better able to jump onto opportunities with DC Comics and Warner Brothers. Present us... Uh, present to uh, or present to us to tie in with what's going on in the greater DC Comics world out there. In fact, when this new plan launches, one of the first pieces of content will be one of these opportunities. We're so happy our partners at DC are working with us in this direction. We know you're going to love it. You know what? You know what? You, you know what, Spittle? I love it. I do love it. I love it a lot. I love it a lot. I love it! <laughs> That's from a Seth Meyers thing from the Awesomes on Hulu. That's great shit, too. I love it! Oh my god, it's so great, right? So great! So we're gonna get we're gonna have episodes that tie into the comic books. Now, and if you're wondering, some of those comic books that you're reading right there, they have about maybe a six month head start. It's not something that just happens on the spot. It, you, they they have large amounts of time ahead to talk about storylines. So if they're bringing DCUO into those discussions a little bit, it's like, hey, we're gonna have this storyline. For so and so, why don't you have a? Can, why don't you guys do a little piece of content in game? This is what we want. This is it. We need collaboration. We need that togetherness with the comic books for better marketing. So we have more new players come in, and players are going to really jump for joy. I swear to. I swear, if we get DCUO convergence, if convergence ties in to D. Oh, let that happen! I mean, Convergence actually looks pretty well. Just stick with the main storyline, though. If you want to get the inside stories, I, I picked up the Speed Force. It looked pretty well. Convergence is definitely looking a lot better than that other than that other place that you know is doing the same freaking thing with a reboot. 2015, the year of reboots in comic books. So, so let's talk about the frequently asked questions because I have to read these and I have to state them. Uh, how will new episodes be purchased? Well, members will still automatically receive all access to the episodes, and then non-members will purchase them. Uh, will purchase them on the marketplace 
uh, and they'll only purchase the episodes that interest them. You don't have to buy everything. If you want to buy episode uh, out of one, two, and three, if you only want to buy number three and number one, go for it. Fine, whatever. Now, I also state that there are no prices. Do not come and ask me on the bottoms, like, how much are they? Hopefully, you read to the and watch the entire video and you get to this point and you're like, hey, guess what? There's no pricing for the purchasing right now. There's no pricing for the episodes. No pricing for the episodes yet. They have not released that information. And when they do, they'll tell you. And then when I see that they're going to tell you, I'll tell you as well. Because I tweet that stuff on Twitter. And I post it on Facebook too. And you know what? I just might make a video about it. Because I can make a video. Because I like videos. Boom. Yeah. So there's no pricing for the episodes just yet. But you know, it's coming down the line. Once we get closer to the launch. After uh, Halls of Power Part 2 most likely. Once that launches and gets settled into its place. We'll probably start seeing some pricing. So, does, uh, do these changes impact Halls of Power Part 2? I can't read that, and that's a no. Uh, the Marks of Victory and the Mark re uh, Relevancy changes begin with Update 47, and Marks of Victory will be used in Halls of Power Part 2. The monthly episodes will begin after. After. Okay, it's going to start after Halls of Power Part 2. Uh, will the trilogies be completed? We intend to give the trilogy storylines worthy endings with episodes after Halls of Power Part 2. I mean, I swear, you are not going to give me the biggest tease in my War of the Light Saga and not end it, okay? I will probably hurt a cat. I, I, I will. I, I, there, I need that ending. Okay, I need that. Uh, what are elite alerts? Just like how they sound. Their elite versions, uh, the elite alerts will be challenging pieces of four player content that drop the best rewards the month they are released. So, as an example, let's say if <laughs> this is a sick, this is a sick example, because I'm a sick person. Let's say that Arkham Asylum came out with an episode and that's the alert, then the alert, then the elite alert will be Arkham Asylum, but tougher. Think about that. Gross, right? Yeah, I think... Oh, that's so gross. So disgusting. No one wants that. No one. Uh, what will gear cost in Marks after the transition to Marks of Victory? Gear costs will be on a scale that closely resembles what you're used to for top-tier episode content. Some tiers have lower costs, and we won't be raising them just for the sake of consistency. So like I said, Tier 1 and Tier 2 are basically really low, so they're probably going to stay the same. On our end... Look at tier 6 cost, and that's probably what they're going to have for the costing for tier 3 and up going forward. Uh, what will initial mainframe unlocks and boosts recurring unlocks cost? So, unlocks with Orbital Strike, Supply Drop, and Tactical Mods will all cost 25 marks of victory. The unlocks for Sidekicks will cost 5 and, tw uh, and 20 marks of victory. Oh, I'm sorry. Those are actually the boosts. Yeah, the unlocks are going to be 5, and then the boosts are going to be 20. No, this is weird. Hold on. Unlocks for sidekicks cost 5 and 20 marks of victory. And up and then uplocks. <sighs> uplocks for backup and henchmen cost 10 and 25 uh, marks of victory. Okay, I see what they're talking about. I see what they're talking about. Sorry. So, yeah. Because you have to buy the first two in order to unlock the boost... You're looking at 5 and then 20. You're looking at 10 then 25. But then the Orbital Strike, the Supply Drop, and the Tactical Mods will just cost 25 across the board. Uh, and then the new boosts, which is just the one column of boosts, is going to be 7 marks of, vi marks of victory. Okay. I got that. I figured it out. Uh, what will utility belts cost? Unlocking extra utility belt slots will be 5 marks of triumph. Will be 5 marks of victory. Boom. Uh, so, I mean, of course, you got like two of them, so that's five and five. It's going to be ten. So each slot is going to be five. What will R&D components cost? Vendor plans will cost 25 marks of victory. And then the catalyst will cost one mark of victory. What will the cap be? A hundred. It's going to be, the cap is a hundred marks of victory. How will marks of fury and triumph be converted? With Game Day 47, your current marks of triumph will be converted to victory at a rate based on your current combat rating. Marks of Fury will convert to Marks of Victory at a 1 to 1 ratio. Now, a lot of you people are probably asking yourself, I mean, I know Super Patreon and Brittany are two people that I know who have stacks and stacks of Triumph and Fury, or 
probably just stacks of fury just backed up in their bags. Use them. Use them now. This is your warning. You need to spend them. Spend them all. Spend them like you're a millionaire or something. You need to spend all of them. Why? Because when Game of Day 47 launches, you can kiss them all goodbye. They will just be gone. You will not have access to them. They will just be gone. They will just be out of nowhere. No one will care. You spend them. Spend them all. If you're wanting to know what to spend them on, buy a whole bunch of catalysts. I don't know. I'm not rich. I don't know what to buy. Uh, Boogity boogity boogie. Uh, will symbols be converted? No, because symbols will be simply removed as a requirement on vendor gear and from your currency tabs. So bye bye, Vin symbols. Bye bye. When will new monthly content begin to be released after Halls of Power Part 2? New content will be released dating, starting about three or four months after Halls of Power Part 2 releases. What will happen to inventory items that grant marks when consumed? Here it is. Consuming these items will not award marks of any kind. Players will want to consume these before Game Day 47, so the marks can be converted to victory. Spend them all on things. What will happen to inventory items? Oh, sorry, I already read that. How will mark relevancy work as we transition to Tier 7 slash Episode 14 slash Beyond? While the Power Part 2 launches and in-game players progress into new content, they will have six pieces of content relevant to them. That's the six pieces of content from that episode, from Halls of Power Part 2. After the first monthly release, they will have 8. After the second, they will have 10. And after the third monthly release, they will have 12. And then 12 pieces of content relative, uh, relevant forever after that. So, that's what you're looking at. The Halls of Power and then the 3 months after are going to be 12 pieces of content running with that. Uh, okay, so a couple of questions I have from Twitter. Uh, from at DCUO21955, will I be able to buy old gear tier 3, tier 4 when this update comes in? Yes, uh, in a sense. You will, if you're tier 6, you'll basically run your tier 6 content, collect your marks, and you can go back and buy your tier 3, tier 4 stuff. Uh, that's... That's something that even I kind of would like to see a little leniency on. Maybe use like a cash option or something. Because, I mean, Tier 3 and Tier 4, a lot of the old stuff, they have like those large mounts of gear that you can get. Especially with Tier 4. You can get like four different styles. I feel uh, that there needs to be a direction with that. To if you can play like a full set, the other sets are like maybe cash or something. I don't know. Uh, that That's just an idea that I came up with. Uh, but... Basically, at this moment, as we do this video and do talk about the, in the threads, right now you basically need to run your current content, collect your marks, and if you don't want to buy anything on your tier six stuff, the, your the, the relevant stuff, then you will go to your tier three and tier four vendor, and you will buy the stuff there with your current marks. And basically, you'll rerun your current content in order to go back and buy more. So that's it. You can't run old content. For marks in order to use that stuff for your old tier. Just can't. Uh, and then Robbie Atkins, 21. Could the idea of monthly episodes and monthly new gear, etc., be off putting to members who, st who, who stood away and want to return? I have a, a, a weird time when I can play. I mean, I might be gone from, a, from the game for like a month at, at a time. So, and, and like I said before, this kind of affects me too. Because on paper, it is off-putting. On paper. But with each month, I want to say with each cycle, it's going to be relatively uh, in your CR. I mean, it actually might be like 12 pieces of content might be within your CR requirement. It, it, that's, that might be how it, how it goes and how it ele uh, ele elevates to the next CR. Uh, but like I said, until we get past like this initial launch... After we get past Halls of Power Part 2, as we get past that first three months, and we go into that fourth month to start the new cycle, that's where we're going to see how the CR is going to raise and how it's going to differ with the content. So, uh, it, it's, it's going to be an adjustment for sure, but on paper, it's okay to be scared. On paper, it is. But once we get to that initial point, once we get four or seven months down the line... And get ready for that next cycle 
I think it'll become a lot clearer on how it's going to progress. So that's basically it. Just some topics I wanted to make sure I hit. Old content, no marks. Sorry for you. I, I got nothing. I, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to help your buddy and run stuff, remember you can still get the feats. If you don't have the steeds, you can still get the, uh, the gear and get some styles if you don't have the styles. But honestly, saying that running old content, you get nothing, it's not right. That's not correct. You do get something. It's just You just don't get what you want. And you want the marks, but you're not going to get the marks because that makes it too easy. You can, you can run FOS 3, you can run the FOS raids and get your marks and you can use that run to get to, uh, to get your current content. And that's not the point. You want, they want your marks to be collected on the content that you're running that's relative to you. Not run old content and all that stuff. Now, of course, you can do the uh, diminishing returns. It's like you run lower stuff and you get like so-and-so marks. You get a lower quantity, but they don't want to do that way. And because they don't want you to get marks outside of that. They want you to get the marks with your current content. Uh, no increase in the mark cap. I think we all understand why. It's basically because when you can max out at 100 and you want to try and the next piece of content, next piece of gear comes out, they don't want you going straight towards that content to those vendors or whatever, getting that gear without running that content. You need to run the content, get those marks, and then go buy some tier. Now, of course, with 100, you can at least buy two, three pieces of, of vendor gear, yeah. But if we jump it up to like 200, or even jump it up to 150, it, that's out of control. And that's what they don't want. They don't want that. So, it's how they want to do it. It's, it's uh, and honestly, I don't really don't care about the mark cap because I never hit it. I never get close to it, so it doesn't really affect me. Uh, but I'm sorry if that sounded disingenuine, but that's really how I feel. I, I don't have a problem with the mark cap. I understand why they're doing it, and I don't want players going in there, buying a, like almost the entire vendor set, and then running the content. That's, that's ass backwards a little bit. You run the content, collect your marks, and then you go in there and handle business. The bees nails. Uh, so high CR is running, uh, ruining low CR progression. Yeah, I experienced that the other night. I, it was really bummy. I could have cursed a lot more if I wasn't on my stream. Uh, and and Mep said on the forums when it came about, and he said that proof, and the proof is on their side. They have the data that prove that it can make room for the for other CR players who are at level. So. Until we really see Game Update 47 when this comes out and we don't see any high levels coming in, we'll we'll see how the queues are for the low-level content. We'll see. I don't think it's going to change. Uh, I think we have a lot of good uh, new players coming in and even players who are making alts. And if you really wanted that carry, you can just make up your own group and go with the carry. So uh, stack clamping won't fix it. Uh, I have it here from Mets from the forums. Even if that were an option, it's simply not realistic to let the entire game be run for marks. It would entirely trivialize progression, the need to master, and defeat the hardest, newest content for its rewards. Yes, you beat the current content for your CR, and you earn those marks. Running old content, one shot in bosses, gaining a mark, that trivializes progression. That trivializes progression for a lot of players, because you can look at that new player... And complain that they don't know what they're doing in that higher level content. Well, stupid! Look at the look at the previous content. Look at that. This dude ran Area 51. He wanted to learn, but the people didn't care. They didn't want to. They didn't want to teach him. They just wanted to blast through everything, run through it, get their marks, and get the hell out. Like, well, thanks for the speed feet, but I don't know what I'm doing. And here comes the raids. It's like, why aren't you putting out power? Do you not know you, you, you can't run your power? You've been doing this for so long. Where's your power? Power out! But they don't know because they were never learned. We need to teach our players. They need to be taught. Uh, and then math for the mainframe, we've already discussed that as well. So that's basically it. That is in a nutshell. I know it's a long video, but it was a long freaking post. And plus, I'm funny. And I'm informational. So uh, 
that's it right there for the what's new for DCUO. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in, this, in the comment section below. And I'll be sure to try and answer them as best of my ability. Or I just might take an entire day to read all the questions and make a separate question video and try to answer like an FAQ style thing. Or I might shoot them all to MEPS and it's like, hey, answer these players' questions. Reply and answer them. Answer all of them. Because I demand it. Or at least I sincerely request it in the form of cake and brandy. It, it sounds gross together. You, you're not supposed to eat the cake first and then the brandy as a dessert. That's right. Brandy is a dessert. It's delicious. So, thank you all so much for, for watching this video as long as it was. And I do appreciate it. And if you guys also have any more questions, please go to the thread. It's in the description. You need to go read that thing. It might be like, actually, it's probably 40 pages by now. Because, I mean, players are now out of school. They're all reading it now. So it might be up to 40, but I recommend try your best to read through them. Read them as an as a bedtime story. Like it's a good book. It's a good book. So give it a read and reply if you have any, any concerns. Meps and Spill are in that thread. They are busting their hump, uh, replying to many questions, trying to get them answered, get, make sure everyone's relieved. And again, thank you all so much in the community on the forums. You guys have been really positive about this thread. I haven't sold like one pitchfork or torch the entire time. I was expecting a riot, but you guys did pretty well with this. So put your pat yourself on the back. You did great. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. And remember on Friday, April 10th, when this is probably actually out at 11 a.m. Pacific time over at twitch.tv slash DC Armors Online, they're doing the reveal for Halls of Power Part 2. And I'll try to host it on my stream so you guys can make sure to take a look. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.